translation group, you get a finite group, and it turns out that that factor group is isomorphic to the point group. And if you know point groups and do analysis with the point groups, that is sufficient because space group, uh, factor group made of space group with the translation group is isomorphic to. So such factor groups are very, very useful when we apply in crystallography and in general in physics. So as you can see, this is an infinite group. Subgroup is also infinite, but the factor group is finite. It just order is 3. Okay? So that is, suppose if I choose this set of all integers divisible by 5, then I will have h, 1 plus h, 2 plus h, 3 plus h, 4 plus h, 5 plus h will be same as h itself. So you will have a group of order 5. Okay? So this is <coughs> Let me also give you another example. Let me also give you another example. Of course, at this point, uh, we have O2, the set of all orthogonal matrices, okay, set of all. So, O2 is defined as A such that a transpose A is equal to, sorry, A transpose A is equal to identity. Set of all orthogonal matrices. The set of all A such that A transpose A is equal to identity and an additional condition determinant of A is equal to plus 1. Now, SO2 is a normal subgroup of O2. SO2 is a normal subgroup of O2. Okay. Now, <coughs> you can say that this is also continuous infinite, this is also continuous infinite, but SO2 is a normal subgroup. of O2. Then SO2, sorry, O2 quotient SO2. Okay, I will not write that group, but tell me what is the order of the group? Just 2. SO2, set of all matrices whose determinant is plus 1 and then another set. You take any matrix whose any any uh, vector any matrix whose determinant is minus 1 okay who matrix whose determinant is minus 1 and then multiply that with all these elements you will get the remaining elements okay so this is actually so2 and some matrix p operating on so2 where you can define this p to be 1 0 0 minus 1. The determinant of this one is minus 1, right? So, you can write down. So, order of this factor group is just 2. That means, it is like identity and another element. Can we say that this uh, factor group inherits all the properties of group? All the properties of? Group, main group. There is, there is some um, <coughs> See, this structure will, will reduce the infinite group into some finite group. Okay? So, it is it's, it's actually the relation between the subgroup and the, we will be able to write the factor group with the relation between subgroup and it is the structure within structure. Okay? So, how a subgroup can make the full group? If you have an orthogonal matrix, its determinant can be plus 1 or minus 1. Okay, so take all matrices whose determinant is plus one. They are in SO2. So what is there in O2 that is not in SO2? All those matrices are whose determinant is minus one. So if I multiply some matrix whose determinant is minus one with those matrices, then I will get all other matrices. So simplest matrix whose determinant is minus one is one minus one along the diagonal and zero along the half diagonal. Okay. 
Okay, so let me now introduce uh, a very important group which we are, which we will be studying called a symmetry group. So far what I have discussed are some groups which are just mathematical sets with some structure imposed on them using binary composition rule. Now we are going to first time talk about a symmetry group. What is a symmetry? As I told you in the morning, today's date if you change uh, date to year, year to date, of course you should not write 2015, then we will be in trouble. As long as you write it as 15, 5, 15, you interchange, the structure of your date will not change. So it's a transformation. So you have some physical system. It may be a geometrical structure of a molecule or a crystal, or it may be it may be the Hamiltonian of a particular system. You do some transformations. I ask all of you to close your eyes and I do some operation. And then you open your eyes. I ask you, do you find any difference? If you don't find any difference, then that means that's a symmetry operation. So we on any particular system, if you can find what are all symmetry operations, what are all the operations which leave the system invariant after the operation is made, such an operation is called a symmetry operation. So, <coughs> symmetry operation are in general transformation symmetry operation or transformation leaves the system the system could be a <coughs> structure of a molecule or a crystal or Lagrangian or Hamiltonian of a system. So symmetry operation or a transformation leaves the system unchanged or invariant. Or sometimes we say system takes it into itself, system takes it into itself. This is the language we use. So let me introduce this symmetry group concept by an example. So let us consider the symmetry group of a geometrical object. In this case, I will use an equilateral triangle. an equilateral triangle. Suppose I have an equilateral triangle which is like this and the center of the triangle is the centroid of the triangle. Now I ask all of you to close your eyes and then I rotate about this point by 120 degrees and you open your eyes, will you find any difference? No. 240 degrees? No. Now if I put a mirror here and reflect, you will not find any difference. If you put a mirror here and reflect, you will not find any difference, right? So there are several such operations called rotations, reflections, okay? 
and some operations called rotor reflections, etc., which I will do. These are all called point group operations because I am doing all these things about a point fixed. The center, center of this triangle is fixed in all these operations. So group operations which will leave at least a point. You can leave a rotation will, uh, a reflection will fix the entire plane, rotation will fix the entire axis. Only a rotor reflection will fix only one point. So any, at least a point should be fixed. Such operations are called point group operations or point symmetry operations. So I want to list down what are all operations that will leave this equilateral triangle invariant. For that purpose, let me, for our, for our understanding, let me put some labels for these vertices. So let me call this one as 1, this one as 2, this one as 3. When I label it, I rotate it, I know I have rotated because the labels have changed, correct? But that is only for our uh, bookkeeping purposes. We are not, uh, the triangle is not changing, only we are painting these labels. This is for our bookkeeping purposes. Supposing if I rotate this, E is identity. What is identity? Identity means don't do anything, don't rotate, don't touch, don't reflect. So it is identity. If you don't do anything, it's a symmetry operation by default. Now I will define an element. Let's worry about this nomenclature later. So now you understand simply this element is C3 means rotation by 120 degrees about the centroid, about the centroid. So what will happen if you do that rotation? So if I say identity, identity will not change anything. So 1 will be here, 2 will be here, 3 will be here. If I rotate it by 120 degrees, rotation is always counterclockwise direction. Okay, this is a convention. We always rotate anti-clockwise direction. So if I rotate it, what will happen? These labels will change, right? What will happen? 1 will come here, 2 will come here, and 3 will come here. So the object will undergo a rotation where these labels which we have kept there for booking purposes would have changed like this. I do once again a rotation that I will call it as C3 2. That means 2 times C3. This is rotation by 240 degrees about the centroid. So this will give me a picture, 1 will come here, 2 will come here, 3 will come here. Now I have a mirror which passes through 1, a mirror will pass through 1, 1 will not change, right? The reflection will take this 2 here, 3 here. I will call this as reflection through a mirror passing through when I write like this you always should do this operation on the uninitiated one. You should not reflect one here. Of course, here also the same thing will happen, but you should always do. So what is, so when I do this, I am doing this on this one only. This on this one. This also on this one. So what will I get? I will get 1, 3, 2. 1, 3, 2. Then I will define sigma 2 
as the mirror passing through 2. So that is what I will get. 2 will not change, but 3 will come here and 1 will come here. And sigma 3 is the reflection through a mirror passing through 3. So that means we will have 3 will not change, 2 will come here and 1 will come here. So these are all the symmetry operations that will leave a piece of this equilateral triangle invariant. Okay? Now, we want to establish that the set of all operations form a group. So, in, in chemistry there is a symbol called C3V which is a group formed by this element E, C3, C3 2, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. What is the order of this group? 6. Okay. Now, of course, I do not know whether this forms a group or not. We have to verify, but I am assuming that it will form a group. How do we know whether this will form a group or not? We have to verify all the rules for each one of the elements. So, instead of that, once and for all, we can make a multiplication table. E, C3, C3 2, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, E, C3, C3 2, sigma 1, sigma 2.